we need to, you know, bring back our masks for schools. So the bottom line is we're going to keep kids safe. We're going to keep our members safe. And we're going to try to open up schools and we're going to try to move through this political battlefield. The president asked me to be in charge of managing that piece, then President Trump. We've got to shape people at this point and say, come on now. We tried voluntary. President, you said, if you were fully vaccinated, you no longer need to wear a mask. And it seems that if you're fully vaccinated in the area where we do not have the well, right In May, you made it sound like the vaccine was the ticket to losing the mask forever. And that, that is at the time that's right it was true at the time peter Ducey, man just <laughs> shouting at the president which is good biden's been in in washington for 59 years he knows how to take it he can take a a, a loud reporter yelling at him but and we'll get to all of that and but i hate to start the show um in a fight and alice shattuck is very upset very <laughs> upset <laughs> Alice, would you like to talk? I seem very upset, don't I? If you want to follow along, you can go go to the Burn Barrel Podcast Twitter feed, and you will see a photo saying uh, you'll see a photo of Alice in a split screen because she's still on um, on undisclosed location. We have a compliment on the wallpaper. Wallpaper behind me. Oh, really? <laughs> That's interesting. Really, With the little roosters and stuff yes. on it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so, um, so, uh, so Alice tweeted something out from the burn barrel. It, it, you no, no, sorry. asked me to tweet this from okay. the burn barrel. Alice sent a couple of pictures. To. You were trying Alice, to. Alice, we have and to you explain. don't know how to tweet before, pictures. Before apparently. everybody hears the real you, we have to explain what happened. What happened? Okay. Don't give them both barrels. They didn't do anything, Alice. I'm explaining to the people that I had to tweet for you okay. because you don't know how to put images in a tweet, apparently. Okay. Now, hold on. So, hold on, Alice. Okay, so what happened was Alice took a couple of pictures that showed she and I, the split screen, um, with with a certain cameras that we were using. She just sent them, texted me while I was doing the show. And so, so I said, uh, oh, great. One of them you really look hot in, really look beautiful in. And um, so I'm going to tweet it out. And mm-hmm. so I tried to tweet it up, but I couldn't I get it so far. I couldn't get the the stupid thing because it just cause. To first of all, some jerk at my last job took over my computer and erased my download folder. So the down my download folder, as far as I know, is somewhere in Poughkeepsie or somewhere next to a, a, a rat trap uh, in, next to a Costco. I don't, Sorry, I don't, you can't find your download. folder. I don't folder. have one anymore. <laughs> Nothing goes anywhere. I can't. I, I, so the, the name you of the, do have a download folder. The, the, so the file has to be, I have to type in the name of a file and hope to goodness, uh, God, I hit it. Anyway, so I couldn't do it. So I said, fine, can you just do it? And can you just do it and just get let people know we're getting ready for the show? So Alice. <laughs> no, uh, you specifically told me the words to tweet. Right. So Alice. Typed, I said, just tell me what you want me to put. Fine, I'll do it. I was annoyed already so, because you can't figure out how to paste an image into a tweet or something but you were like what is this it's like a bump extension and it's like a bitmap or something i can't like ah, i feel bad for your it departments at your work having to deal with you but anyway so he told me the words to say and then he made fun of me for saying those words that he literally i just typed what he was verbally saying to me over the microphone you know what because you're uh, a nerd from planet nerdville i feel bad for your et department <laughs> what does that mean get it planet no. nerdville because you're a nerd from a planet nerdville i feel bad for your et department get it like extraterrestrial yes huh Pretty good. I don't, I don't know that. Yeah, I Yeah, that's it. because you're not smart enough to understand my my humor. So so then she she says she misses the she says we're getting to ready to roll another show. <laughs> the first tweet <laughs> tweet she puts out, which is a weird <laughs> like Soviet spy thing to say that nobody would say. And I, and I think she was trying to talk speak radio east or uh, so she's. I was just typing what you so said. She types. <laughs> she, she types on. We're getting ready to roll another show. 
And I'm like, all right, <laughs> whatever. You're a geek. You don't know what I'm fine. And so, and so I'm laughing at it saying, I, I don't know to roll another show. Do you think you're cool? I don't even know what that means. That I, That's something to see. She then gets self-conscious about it and, and panics and deletes the tweet, which you should never do. You never delete a tweet. So you can was, delete tweets. It's allowed. So not because God forbid this, your facade of coolness uh, come down for a nanosecond. And you said, no, because people are going to know that I posted it then and it's going to seem vain because the picture's hot. And like overthinking to eight degrees, Alice, all the guys, the women are going to blame me no matter what. And all the guys care about is that the picture's hot. Doesn't matter. Okay. It could be me on the other side of the picture, Alice. Uh, you are hang, on the other side of the hanging picture. Hanging from the rafters dead <laughs> and nobody would care or report it. So so then she deletes it. So then I said, so I said, no, put it back up. Put it back up. She puts it back up, and this time says, <laughs> and, this is, and any of you guys in radio, this is too good. And maybe TV, I guess, too. Stop! <laughs> Why are we making fun of me? Wait, I thought we were supposed to. Because <laughs> it's very cute. So I, I might, wait, well, let me look at you and see if how much I'm in trouble I am. Hey, where are you? Where is she? <laughs> what happened? Alice, you yelled at me, and then you were gone, and I'm looking at you. I haven't been looking at you. What ha am I? Am, what's happening? Am I in trouble? I had to get a tissue. I was c laughing so hard, I was crying. Okay. So, so Alice writes. <laughs> Don't make fun of me. I'm, Why are you making? I'm not allowed to. Be, we're supposed to make fun of me too. We're just we're we're. Can we make fun of? Because I think it's cute. Forget it. I Can just you posted what you said to post, and now I'm under attack. You're not under attack. I love it. Believe me, I think it's adorable. Goodness. <laughs> Alice types getting ready to roll on another show, and there's nothing. And I think that's, that's what you said to type. There was a typo the first time, and now there's not. But that's what you told me to type, and now you're attacking me. I don't know what I did. I just said, what do you want to type in the thing? Because Alice, I'm doing I'm for you because you can't download a picture like and then was, you wait, told wait, me what to do and now why, i'm in trouble this for is it. a happy thing you nobody's in trouble why is the in trouble i think it's cute <laughs> anyway <laughs> forget it i'll tell them you know what i'll take this to no i don't want to be i don't want to be selfish with it <sighs> So, Alice, I must have misspoken because okay, I must have absolutely misspoken while I was making you say things word for word. You wouldn't really roll on your own show. It would go without saying. That's what you said to type. <laughs> okay. So if um, if your friend, um, Governor Charlie Baker, you call him Charlie Faker, I think, if he were starting to talk, tell us that the, clo that the coronavirus was going to make the school close again and you would roll on that you know that okay <laughs> <laughs> all right let's move to other all i'm getting is in trouble here and i don't see why i've done nothing but be a great guy today <laughs> you spent all day swimming and frolicking and going to la, pit, la patisseries and all those things with your kids and i've been abandoned here in it was a great day up here it was all right so I want to talk about, um, you, so actually t today's show in Connecticut and TIC totally kind of feeds into what we're doing too, because today's show in Connecticut was just looking at this little data point that you had brought out saying that the CDC, mm -hmm. which had everything was pinned in the last couple of days on the fact that you and I, even though in your, in you guys listening, if you're vaccinated, even though you're vaccinated, you can still spread the virus. You can, we, a room full of us, Ra Rochelle Walensky said, a room full of us can spread it to each other as well. Right. And so, and this was written up by Business Insider and this and that, and a thousand people wrote it up. And I said, I said, uh, yeah, but my wife, you had mentioned earlier that they don't, there's no citation for it. And so yeah, others I said yesterday on the show that I don't believe that it goes against everything that we know about infectious disease science, how vaccines work everything and that i just i don't believe so what rochelle walensky actually said that or uh that pinged my like spidey senses on science was that she said that the um the levels of 
viral load, that's like how much virus is in your system, in the upper respiratory tract of vaccinated people was indistinguishable from unvaccinated people, that there was no difference in the amount of virus. Okay. And that just, it, it, that doesn't make any sense. It's not something that goes with what we know about vaccines. So, and, and viruses and everything else. The idea that you could have asymptomatic unvaccinated people, or sorry, asymptomatic vaccinated people walking around who have as much virus in their system as an unvaccinated sick person, just it, it doesn't go with like how the immune system works or virology or molecular biology or anything. It just does it. So I kind of said on this show yesterday, I said like, I'm very curious to see this data that they're saying that they're seeing that shows this because it doesn't really like, I, I would be very surprised by that. So this has continued to be an issue because they haven't released any data that shows that they have completely undermined uh, their their public comments about the efficacy of, of the vaccine. They have absolutely given fuel to everybody who wants to say that the vaccine doesn't work and doesn't do anything and there's no point to taking it. I know that you were getting these calls all day on air today. Why would you take the vaccine? It doesn't even work. You're spreading it just as easily if you take the vaccine as if you don't. Like that. That's what they said today or yesterday, essentially, is that you're just as likely to spread the virus if you're vaccinated as if you're unvaccinated. Well, it's in Alice, we, I, had some pe- I had some people send me things today saying that you're more yeah. likely a yeah. spreader so if, that was, there's if that you're USA vaccinated. There's a USA Today article that's phrased that way because it's so... Now, the CDC still has not released any data that shows that. They haven't. Um, and we should note, Alice, that, that they got mm-hmm. walloped today by the Washington Post. Yeah, Washington Post. Which is Post the said, house organ is for data? the administration. And so if the Post nails you, you've got problems. Well, yeah, because they're saying that the vaccine doesn't work, essentially, on the basis of secret data that they're not telling anybody, which is absolutely outrageous. And if they don't have this data, then they, I mean, like people need to lose their jobs. This is ridiculous. You can't go around saying that the vaccine doesn't do anything, that you're just as likely to spread it, possibly more likely to spread it if you're vaccinated uh, on the basis of nothing, on the basis of just wanting to make people wear masks again, like because you enjoy that for fun. I like the because there's no science to back this up that I know of or that they're telling us. And so the fact that this is happening right now, the fact that they're going out here and saying this stuff with absolutely nothing to back it up needs to freak out everybody. It's it's completely insane. And so there's one study that they cited that's in India. Okay, this is like the quality of data that we're talking about. In India, they took 100 people and modeled, uh, they took 100 people who had Shield and got infected with the virus, okay? So they had a detectable level of virus in their system after getting Shield vaccine, which is essentially like the AstraZeneca vaccine. It's not one of the RNA vaccines. It's not a vaccine that's available in the United States. Nobody in the United States has taken it. This is a completely different vaccine with a completely different technology. So, and they modeled based on those people that um, the ones that had the Delta variant as opposed to the other variants had a higher viral load than people who had other variants like the original wild type or the alpha variant. So, and that's possible. It's possible that people who had breakthrough infections with Delta had higher viral load than people who had breakthrough infections with other variants. But that does not show what the CDC is saying it shows, which is that those people had a higher or similar viral load to people who were never vaccinated, which that study did not compare and was not a part of that. It's also based on only 100 people. And the paper was also rejected in peer review. And if that is the paper that they're basing this whole guidance on, walking back all the mask mandates back to this spring from beforehand and telling people that the vaccines don't work and completely undoing all the work of trying to make this vaccine seem credible, I, I just like I mean, it's the most irresponsible thing I've ever heard of. If that's the basis, if it, because then they cite um, unreleased CDC data 2021 is another one of their citations. Like, what what are we supposed to do with that information? If there's really some risk here, then they need to be upfront about it and release the data. And if not, then they need to 
say we're sorry we screwed up this whole mask mandate thing but i mean like the loss of credibility here is just insane right it's and people absolutely are in, no in, sense that they did this i'm so angry right. about it and people are pouring through the hole that they left people are absolutely pouring through like uh, one of the like the return of the king you know, battle scene at the end uh, with whatever belief they already had you know the people are the never vaxxers are saying you see you see you see and you see, they say it doesn't work, right. which I mean, is what they said yesterday. They said it, the vaccine doesn't work, that you, you have just as much virus in your system if you're vaccinated, maybe more than if you don't, which makes no sense. It just it's it. And there's no data to back it up. And there's no science. Like, why are they saying it? And what data are they seeing? So, I, so I, let's try to think about that. So is the goal here to say that the vaccine, it doesn't really work to scare us into masks, to make us. Um, then mad at non-vaxxers and then f pressure them into getting the vaccine to knock the numbers down and go towards herd immunity and help Biden politically? Is that the nine-way bank shot that they're looking at here? What I mean, I guess so. Like that we're then going to think that we have to be mad at people who don't want to take the vaccine. So like we'll pressure them and then they'll take it. But since they just went out there and said the vaccine doesn't work, who's going to take it now? Like, I don't yes. understand you know what, this what is, they're Alice? doing. You know they're what this so is? stupid. I You know what this. this is, Alice? This is the large, wood large wooden badger approach in Monty Python. I guess so. You know, I mean, they totally, they've totally <laughs> pulled the grenade out, pulled the pin out of the grenade and threw the pin and held onto the grenade. I mean, you can't begin the series of levers that are going to, uh, you know, connect and move, etc., and react to one another to f get to the end goal if you've blown up the end goal in the beginning. Yeah, they, I mean, like, I don't, I don't know what they're thinking this is going to do, or they're trying to like uh, mentally prepare people to take a booster. But like, nobody's going to do that now because they've completely blown up any any semblance of trust that they had left after all the mixed messaging and stupidity of the last year. Like, now, now what? Now what? You just said the vaccine doesn't work. You just made idiots out of everybody who took it, and you have no scientific basis for it. You're going out here with no published data that backs up what you're saying and telling everybody that took the vaccine, well, you were done for taking it because now, like, you're just, you might as well have not even taken it. Oh, wow. Sucks to be you. So now what they, they're in a position now where they either have to go with the messaging. Right. Which is to say that if you've been vaccinated, you haven't really been vaccinated. Or they have to utterly contradict and reverse what they've said. In which case, it's there goes the last bit of credibility. Well, right. I mean, and based on what? And then they would expose them as having done it. What they don't want to do is be exposed for having done it for manipulation purposes, which is what they've done. There's it no way it's for anything other than right. That. But I they, mean, but, but, but they, they don't want to. But hold on, they don't want to expose that. That's deadly because well, right, that like, looks craven. What possible, well, what no, can no, no. They possibly but, say after this. Well, right. So, so, so that's the thing. So they can't be, they can't be exposed for having effed around with the messaging and dishonestly fabricated <laughs> uh, facts and data here. Right. Because in this situation, with what we're dealing with, you're right. That is frigging criminal. That is. That is maniacal. I mean, that would be incredible. So what is their next best bet? The next best bet must be kind of what they're doing here to try to have you believe that this Delta variant is just more than they bargained for in the beginning because it was allowed to be because people didn't get vaccinated and allowed it to get smarter and better, this Delta variant, so mm -hmm. that they didn't see this one coming. And so they were that they were... Uh, they thought that it made sense that there was a good chance that it, 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 there was so much load in this thing that it could be spread. I mean, I guess but that's it. it still just doesn't like hold up. I mean, there was just a study out of Israel where they tracked a bunch of breakthrough infections uh, and, you know, like a large number of them were Delta variant because that's dominant there. But they weren't able to find in that study one case of a vaccinated person transmitting the Delta variant to another person. 
They weren't able to find one. Now, granted, it was like a smallish study, but like if it were happening all over the place, you would be able to find it. The thing is, is like, yes, you can get the Delta variant enough to have like a detectable positive test in your system and even like get the sniffles, but you're not going to get that sick. And if you're not that sick, like you just don't have enough virus in your system to infect other people. That's the... That's the whole thing about this. Like, there's no way. I mean, is it possible that somebody could transmit it who is vaccinated? Like, yeah, but this we can't find it. So it can't be that big a part of the spread. And I mean, you'll remember we had a similar conversation to this like last year, not even last year, like this spring when the vaccine was out and they were still saying like, well, you still have to wear masks because we don't know if you could transmit it to other people. And then like finally they backtracked on that because the overwhelming data as i had told you previous to them coming out with the the new statement on masks is that vax it doesn't make any sense that vaccinated people would be a major source of viral spread it just it doesn't it like makes the r's are not so much lower that the it's not where it's coming from. That's not where the pandemic's coming from. But now they've undone all that messaging and just come out and said the opposite on the basis of like se- super secret data that they can't tell us. Like it just, uh, <laughs> I don't, it, if they have well, something, if they have some data that shows that the Delta variant of like, whoops, they screwed up and like actually the Delta variant interacts with the vaccine such that like it makes being vaccinated worse than being unvaccinated, which is how everybody is taking what they have said, then they need to like actually come out with the data that supports that because there's absolutely no evidence of that as far as I can see or anybody else that I've read about. And like, I mean, yeah, that's what their statements sound like, but they're not backing that up with anything. And well, I don't, it's so irresponsible. It's so well, irresponsible. So I tell like, me this, I don't, Let, let's there's going to be no chance that anybody's going to take the vaccine now who is hesitant. I'm sorry. Well, like, I, why would they? But, but hold on. How about this? And I am putting this out there with no proof or whatever. I'm just floating a, a, a theory. Okay. What if the vaccine. Mm-hmm. is nowhere near as effective as we thought it was. None of them. The Pfizer, the Moderna, none of them. I don't think that's the case because of data that we've seen out of other countries that are highly vaccinated. And this country, like if you look at the UK data, the um, they do have a bunch of cases of the Delta variant because, like I said, you can still test positive. But, the, I mean, they've decoupled the case numbers completely from hospitalizations and deaths if you look at the number of deaths in the uk it's there there's essentially no deaths because the at-risk population is extremely highly vaccinated and that's what we see here too it's what we're going to see again i mean i don't it we wouldn't be seeing the numbers the way that we're seeing them if it were the case that vaccinated people were uh, were a major source of spread of the illness. And the vaccine absolutely is effective. Like, look at the havoc that the Delta variant wrought in India, right? Like, I mean, so many people died. Their hospitals were completely overwhelmed because they weren't very vaccinated. And people who were vaccinated were vaccinated with, like, Sinovac and these extremely not effective vaccines. And, uh, you know, I think that that when you look at the difference between that and what happened in Israel and what happened in the UK, where like, yes, you had a rise in cases, but there was no corresponding rise in deaths to speak of, that that you can tell that the vaccine is effective just in the real world on the basis of that, even without all the numerous, numerous studies that show this absolutely still is effective against every variant that we have. I mean, there's right. no evidence at this point to suggest that. Right. And I'm not saying there is. I'm just saying it would explain their behavior. <laughs> You know? Well, yeah, I mean, either they've seen something that really spooked them mm-hmm. that they haven't released the data for, in which case, like, all the anti-vaxxers were right all along, or, I mean, or they're just lying, which is also possible. I, I retweeted and I, I sent it to our Twitter feed that we share uh, the Glenn Green, Greenwald uh, video of Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin coming down the, the military plane and meeting all the generals at the tarmac. And they all have, he's got a mask on and a spit uh, shield on as well. And the people meeting him have, all have masks on as well. Uh, what what the hell image is, what is that image supposed to convey to people other than the all of these vaccinated people are absolutely not safe? 
A spit shield? Well, right, and in Congress. And half of them have had it and are vaccinated on top of that. And now they're being forced to wear masks. Like, it's so ridiculous. Did we you have see- Kamala Harris in the mask. We have them getting fined in Congress for not wearing masks. Like, what, what are we doing here? The masks are not that effective. I mean, maybe they're a tiny bit effective if you have nothing else. But the vaccine is very effective and the masks are not really effective. So what are, why are we playing this stupid game? It just... I'm so exhausted. I'm so exhausted. I'm like, I was thinking about it today. I'm like, are we going to do another show where we talk about this stupid freaking mask vaccine? Like, I'm so tired of this. I'm just like drained. I'm sick of having the same conversation and being like, I don't like masks again know, for another know, show. Like, why? Why do we still have to be talking <laughs> about this? Did you see this story, the Bloomberg story about the cases in Britain um, cratering? Um, I don't know if I saw that. But it's, I mean, they are on their way back down. It's another they're, rise they're, in cases. That's what happens: is you have a little surge, it goes yeah, away, and like they've gone down, they've cratered, they've gone down significantly in a week, and nobody knows why. They're expecting because them the to disease keep. Disease is cyclic; it goes up, it goes down. Yeah, it but they, up, but but the the modelers had no idea why. They expected it to keep going up and up and up, and then it just it's gone uh-huh. somewhere over the uh, the last week. Well, maybe the vaccine works. Is it possible? Like I don't. I just uh, I'm sick of the same dumb conversations and we're seeing these stupid little surges here as long as we keep the number of deaths very low as we have been doing because vulnerable people are vaccinated which is what we have in England which is what we have in Israel then I mean like this is okay it's okay for people to get COVID if they don't die of it right like isn't that fine Alice we can get a digital subscription to Bloomberg uh, for only $290 a year Wow, bargain. <laughs> All right, maybe I have some other stuff we can talk about then. By the way, you look lovely in that picture. I suggest people look at it. And is that a uh, piece of your negligee showing, Alice? My swimsuit? Oh, is that I'm what that is? I'm a little bit sunburnt, actually. Oh. Because, so get this. So I forgot, like, because I'm very organized, I forgot our sunscreen, which is normal sunscreen in the house that I have delivered from Amazon monthly. And I... In the winter months? No, I turn it off in the winter. But anyway, so I get sunscreen in the mail and I forgot it for this trip. So I had to go to the uh, store downtown here to get uh, sunscreen. And of course, it was like $15 in like some natural stupid sunscreen. Mm -hmm. But it was... uh, SPF 100, and I put it on all of us, and we were all sunburned. So, SPF 100 is a high number, isn't it? I would think so, yes. Oh, my goodness. But this was expensive, fancy sunscreen. So, apparently, one of, the things, one of the things it doesn't do is keep you from getting sunburned, I guess. So, as long as the um, green heads don't die from it, that's all that matters. Are there bugs yeah, up there? It's environmentally friendly. Uh, what? Are there bugs up there? Troublesome, pestisome? Um, there are some mosquitoes. But there is no ticks, no green heads. Oh, nice. I haven't seen any poison ivy. I'm a fan of it here, much more so. Nice. Uh, okay, so other things going on. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I wanted to play this this Randy Weingarten cut from yesterday. Uh, I don't think we – did we play her yesterday? Oh, yeah. So, the, uh, so this is important on the topic right. of vaccines and how we're all supposed to be mad at unvaccinated people and people who refuse to get vaccinated is that – are we now allowed to be mad at the teachers unions because the American Federation of Teachers and whatever the other big stupid one is, they both come out against having mandated vaccines for teachers? <laughs> yeah. So are they one of the groups of people that we're allowed to hate now because they won't get vaccinated? They, or do they get a special pass where they don't have to be vaccinated? They don't have to get vaccinated. Uh, absolutely. They're not going to tell their teachers to get vaccinated, especially those teachers, the thousands and thousands and thousands in urban areas. are not going to tell them to get vaccinated. So they will not have vaccine mandates. But those teachers who aren't vaccinated are still feeling at risk. So your kid has to wear a mask and most likely will have to be vaccinated. If the school's open, Alice, listen to what Randy Weingarten says. Well, vaccine- vaccination is the number one gold standard um, that we need to you know, bring back our masks for schools. So the bottom line is we're going to keep... Oh, I just want to I just want to stop it. Vaccinations are the number one standard for which we're going to keep bringing our kids back to schools. Says a woman who's not going to make the people who work in the schools get vaccinated. 
Yeah, she's explicitly against making them get vaccinated. Right. Keep kids safe. We're going to keep our members safe. And we're going to try to open up schools. And we're going to try to move through this political. Did you hear that, else? We're going to try try to open up schools. Anything is possible now. I would not be surprised. (laughs) I hate them so much. The only redeeming thing about all this is that um, probably they're killing the public schools forever. Probably. So uh, that's a plus. But. I mean, like it's really just the it's the brazenness is just incredible. We're we'll try to open schools. We're not going to like get vaccinated. Your kid definitely is going to have to be vaccinated, but us, no, no way, <laughs> definitely it's not. Remarkable. But we'll it's, try. It's, we'll try to open the schools for your kid, maybe. You know, because I mean, because the media so we're going to enter it. year three. Yes, year three of not having normal school. For kids. Because the media is, is, are all uh, Democrats and and they're and then they're progressives as well. Were they not behind enough in school yet? No, no. In those thirty thousand who were lost from last year, you know, good luck, you guys. I think it's like a couple million, isn't it? <clears throat> but here's the, the thing: is it don't know where they are? Is that if this group, if this teachers union had been uh, endorsed by part resident Trump or had been a Trump group, there would have been feds all over the place. I mean, these people are absolute gangsters. These are thug criminals, these teachers unions. That is ridiculous that they do. And using kids the whole time. Oh, God. What freaking vile a-holes they are. I I mean, like, at this point, I don't see why going into this next year, anyone who can would continue to send their kids to these people. They're psychotic. They're nuts. Yeah. Well, not as nuts as your body death sentence. Well, look, if anyone is calling for lockdowns, you're not getting that done in Florida. I'm going to protect people's livelihoods. I'm going to protect kids' right to go to school. I'm going to protect people's right to run their small businesses. Uh, we have a situation where we have three vaccines that have been widely available for months and months now, and people need to make decisions uh, what's best for them. But to have the government come in and lock anyone down or restrict anybody is totally unacceptable. And it's easy for some physician to advocate that because it doesn't affect them. Uh, It does affect the people in this state. So we're gonna lift people up, we're not locking people down, and we're gonna make sure that folks are able uh, to exercise their their decision-making, that what's best for them. And I think millions of Floridians have obviously done that uh, for the last year and a half. And so we wanna continue to support their effort. Can we just have an election right now? Yeah, really. I mean, like. This guy is saying everything right. Incredible. It's incredible to hear it said by somebody. It's incredible. You know, it's not even that Biden's bad. Just that he is terrible. He's not good at this job. He was never a real smart guy. And it's just he's lost his a lot of his his abilities just to operate. But he Mm -hmm. is surrounded, you know. There is so much incompetence happening. And this boob, uh, the Joint Chiefs guy, or who was that, the Secretary of Defense who walked down the, the plane with the spit guard and the other thing. And there's so much incompetence in this administration. And remember, Alice, mm-hmm. that this administration, from day one, starting with the vice president, said that identity politics were how they were going to staff up the administration, the executive branch. And every time they brought somebody in, they told us that this person was a first, and this person was the first trans, first, first, uh, this, first that, first this, first that, first this. First this. Mm-hmm. And so they brought in these activists to take these roles, and the idiot Gina B- McCarthy from Boston or whatever, and, and the first this, first that, and you know the only intellectual heavies involved were, uh, you know, I say that facetiously, old retread dolts like John Kerry, Biden's friends, and. And identity politics activists were brought in. And so now we look and we say, huh, it's interesting. This administration, somebody like Tony Blinken, the secretary of state, goes overseas and explains to the Chinese why we are the most oppressive country around, why we have the original sin of uh, oppression and slavery all over us, why we continue to be a nation fraught with slavery. And we wonder now, we wonder exactly why this administration is so impotent and incompetent because we put a bunch of wacko hippie progressive psychos who should be confined to tiktok we've put them in charge 
of the levers of government. These people run everything now, these psychos. Mm -hmm. Seriously, it's crazy. It, you, you just don't... I understand this patronage, etc. that goes through everything. But you want there to be a meritocracy in institutions if you give a flying F about the inf institutions. Now, if you don't, if this is about a different spiritual crusade, then fine, hire the first, this, that, first, that, that you know, and it doesn't matter. We're just playing game. We're playing a, a, a game here. But I seriously think that we are seeing the results of moronic, moronic administration because we're choosing, based on all sorts of uh, characteristics, physical characteristics, rather than, uh, rather than, on uh, on um, merit, it, it, and and we shouldn't be surprised. You shouldn't be surprised when something like this happens. And what do you do? Just get the best people in some department, okay? Because when you hire all activists, they're going to hire below, below them like-minded activists and like-minded activists and like-minded activists looking at equity and this and that. And so the whole entire institution is filled with mediocre. You know, I don't care if the best. If the best of everybody in the State Department, if the top 500 uh, recruits we need to fill the offices of upper management in at State, if they're all trans or black or, or white or gay or whatever, then throw them in, whoever it takes. But this is not a meritocracy. It, it, I, no, and the problem isn't that the people are trans no. or gay or black or whatever. It, I mean, that that's not what makes them incompetent. Rick Grinnell is gay and he's not incompetent. But the thing the thing that makes them incompetent is that they're activists first, yes. right? Is that they're coming at these things ideologically from, from a point of view of they want to use the departments to push forward like these DEI initiatives and they think that, you know, climate justice and equity are like very important to like transportation infrastructure. So uh, that's the problem. That's where the incompetence comes in is it's like, I don't want bridges built by people who their first concern is the equity of the bridge. Like I just need them to make sure it doesn't <laughs> fall down on anybody of any color. Like, just make sure the bridge falls down on as many white people as black people. <laughs> like, good, great. But that's like the type of uh, that's the type of priorities that we're dealing with right now, and that's what makes the whole thing incompetent and terrible. That's what it's. I mean, Obama had problems, but it wasn't that. I mean, like he was, you know, going after Tea Party people, and he wasn't as good at anything as he thought he was, but. Uh, you know, when we had like the Pod Save America bros running things, but at least the Pod Save America bros were like trying to be competent. You know, they weren't just trying to like break things down for the sake of it. So, I mean, I don't know. I just, uh, but today I'm like so depressed by all these. <laughs> By these people, I'm like I hate Rashad Walensky. Well, I hate. Hold Lincoln. on, let me see if I have anybody that's good. Other than I gave you the Santa Alice. There you go. I won't piss you off with the blouse. I like the Santa. Speaking of uh, small business owners, too. Shout out to Cameron who just opened his third store. By the way, that is awesome. Congratulations, Alice. Do you know the name of the store? Tri State Running Company. Awesome. That is great. That is great. We should uh, do something with him. Yeah, very cool. Tri-State Running Company. Check them out. Is there one near here? Are we, are we in the Tri-State? Are we a Tri-State? Oh, it's like in Ohio and like um, Kentucky, I think. Tri-State Running Company. We should, we'll plug them, Alice. They're uh, good for okay. you, Cameron, by the way. There's somebody who's taking a chance in a iffy environment, business environment right now, going and doing, and hopefully government stays the hell out of his way. Congratulations again on that. Um, and, uh, okay, Alice, here we go. Here's Peter Ducey doing what is called reporting. Hey, 
made it sound like well, Maxie was true. the ticket to losing the match forever. That, that is true at the time. 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 That getting vaccinated made a gigantic difference. And what happened was, new variant came along, they didn't get vaccinated, it was spread more rapidly, and people more people were getting sick. That's it. But how did that That was true at the time, Alice. But then again, I, I I thought I was just told that the people who got vaccinated still aren't safe. Yeah, we're supposedly spreading it to everybody. But that, like I said, like, so we had a similar conversation to this in the spring where they said, like, we're not sure vaccinated people might still be able to spread it. And I said, at the time, that makes no sense. Like, that's just probably not true. And then, like, once they had data, it turned out that I was right and that wasn't true. And, like, I, you know, you could write that off as a them just being overly cautious. Like, they didn't have data to prove that vaccinated people weren't spreading it yet. You know, and so that's why they did that. But like at this point, I don't get what. Where where is the data, Joe? Like, do you mind showing us where you're getting this? Like vaccinated people are spreading it everywhere from because like n- nobody knows except you, you and Malensky and Fauci have access to this super special data. And we just can't know. We can't know. It's we're all spreading the virus and we're not allowed to know about it. I mean, these are the same people who told us that, like, because Trump didn't act dramatic enough about the virus last year, that that's why they didn't take it seriously. Like, that's why they told everybody to go out for Chinese New Year's, because Trump didn't tell them that the virus was a serious enough issue. Like, he, was it Bob Woodward, the interview that he did mm-hmm. where he said he knew it was going to be serious or whatever? And they were like, see, he lied. Like, well, so if Biden has been lying, if he has access to some special data that shows the vaccinated people are spreading it everywhere and he's not telling us, isn't that just as bad? Like, wh- why are they keeping the data secret if they have it if it exists i don't know i I mean the behavior is just so inexplicable to me i don't understand (laughs) i don't know i'm exhausted i'm exhausted between that and like simone biles hot takes i can't like take it anymore sociopath alice what sociopath She's a sociopath. <laughs> right. But then on the other side, we also have people who are saying that it's like more admirable that she didn't compete than if she had won gold, which also seems outrageous to me, by the way. Right. Like, why does everyone have to have the most insane takes on everything? Like, Why? Why? I don't understand. <laughs> like, she is just a person that wasn't able to compete this time. Like, I don't get it. I don't. I, I literally I don't. It's neither like an embarrassment or a shame or sociopathic or admirable and great. Like she just couldn't do it. Like what I, oh, I like I said, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Everybody's takes are stupid and I'm mad at everyone. And that's it. I give up on people. Sorry, and like, dude. I also, I don't even like the framing of the Simone Biles thing as a mental health thing either. Right. Because I don't think that's exactly what it is. Like if you read the descriptions of what she's talking about, where she's saying, I guess gymnasts call it the twisties. And I'm going to use this term like I know what it is, even though I learned it today. But when the twisties, they they compare it to like the yips. Right. Is it's like a, a sudden like blanking out a loss of muscle memory. Right. Is it's like and I mean, I think people have that in lots of fields, too. Like when you're playing music on a musical instrument. Right. Like sometimes like. You just you're relying on your body to remember what to do. And sometimes you just like blank out. Right. Have you ever had something like that? Of course. And like the problem is when it happens to you when you're a gymnast and you're like upside down 15 feet off the ground, like that's really dangerous, actually. And it, it I mean, people have been paralyzed. There, there, there's gymnasts that have, uh, you know, been very, very seriously injured from having those like blank out moments. And it's difficult to make that go away. So like to me, calling it a mental health issue is like, oh, she felt sad that day. So she didn't want to compete. Like, that's really not what it is. I mean, I guess it's a mental health issue in the sense that it's like it's in her head. It's like a neurological thing. But I also think it's like not precisely a mental health issue in the same way, like, anxiety is a mental health issue do you know what i mean like i just 
If you can't do it, if you need to like retrain into that, it, it that's like. All right, Alice. Breaking news! Physical, right when you thought you were gonna be happy. Oh, great. Okay, go ahead. Um, the behind the mask. Okay. Uh, the New York Times. Okay. New York Times, the CDC is expected to release data showing that vaccinated people may transmit the Delta variant, a finding that prompted its new masking, masking advice. Uh, let's see. The recommendation that vaccinated people in some parts of the country dust off their masks was based largely on one troublesome finding, according to Dr. Rochelle Walensky, director of the Center of the CDC. New research showed that vaccinated people and infected with the Delta variant carried tremendous amounts of the virus in the nose and throat, she said in an e email responding to questions to the New York Times. The finding contradicts what scientists had observed in vaccinated people infected with previous versions of the virus who mostly seemed incapable of infecting others. So far, we don't have the finding, right? Right. Okay. The conclusion dealt Americans a heavy blow, especially with so-called... People with so-called breakthrough infection cases, that cases that occur despite full vaccination of the Delta variant, may be just as contagious as unvaccinated people, even if they have no symptoms. So let me read that like a person who knows how to read. People with so-called breakthrough infections, cases that occur despite full vaccination of the Delta variant, may be just as contagious as unvaccinated people, even if they have no symptoms. I just so, don't. Well, hold on. This is the New York okay. Times. So right now they haven't cited anything yet. Right, right. That okay. means fully immunized people with young children, aging parents, or friends and family with weak immune systems will need to renew vigilance, particularly in high transmission communities. Vaccinated Americans may need to wear masks not just to protect themselves, but everyone in their orbit. There are, 60, uh, there are 67,000 new cases per day on average in the United States as of Thursday. If vaccinated people are transmitting the Delta variant, they may be contributing to the increases, although probably to a far lesser degree than unvaccinated. The CDC has not yet published its data, frustrating experts who want to understand the basis for the change of heart on masks. Yeah, because it's a little well, bit well, counterintuitive yes, to what everybody okay. knows well, about vaccines. Okay. Four scientists familiar with the research said it was compelling and justified the CDC's advice that the vaccinated wear masks again in public indoor sta spaces. So uh, so the four scientists familiar with the research, why don't they tell us more than it's compelling? Why, yeah. why don't they tell us what it is? So Just trust us. It's compelling. Yes. It's great. It's great data. The best data I'm so, ever. So okay. shocked. So shocked. More more PhD credentialed healthcare people are saying, oh, no, absolutely. The masks are a good idea. It's, it's really scary. It's bad. Let me go on. This is the New York Times. The research was conducted by people outside the CDC, the scientists said, and the agency is working quickly to analyze and publish the results. Haven't we analyzed results? The agency expects to publish the research on Friday, one official says. Odd. Tomorrow, as everybody, as the weekend slide begins, as the news cycle fades that's away. When you, that's when you put out information that you're very confident in, I think, is usually Fridays. Right. Some of the research may be related in part to, a, to an outbreak in Provincetown, Mass., where Fourth of July festivities have led to 882 cases as of Thursday. Nearly three quarters of... So I don't want to say anything, Alice, here that's insensitive insensitive but it is possible that fourth of july festivities in provincetown mass are an outlier i'm just saying they might be a little more <laughs> I, intimate than I, 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 don't know. I don't know what, i don't know anything <laughs> nearly three quarters of those people were fully vaccinated okay wait a second uh -huh. Some of the research may be related in part See, to... See, here's the thing. I don't care if vaccinated people test positive. What I want to know is, do they have evidence that there has been vaccinated people wandering around infecting other people? Because that's what they're saying right now, that I don't believe... Right. That I haven't so, seen any evidence that remotely convinces me that that's the case. And maybe, maybe they should actually analyze the data and come out with this extremely compelling data before they tell everyone what to do. Maybe this is just a thought. Maybe that they shouldn't play these stupid communication games. By the way, did you see that they're hiring for a, yes, a six-figure salary communication job at the CDC? So, uh, so let me continue, Alice. 
Okay. Some of the research may be related in part to an outbreak in Provincetown, Mass., where 4th of July festivities have led to 882 cases as of Thursday. Nearly three quarters of those people were fully vaccinated. I am going to say something, Alice, based on no thing at all. I don't know anything about anything. But there's a chance that the folks who were at Provincetown, Mass., for 4th of July, are more likely to get tested for COVID just because of their occupations in life. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? I think that it's possible that some of the the, uh, the people in Provincetown, Mass., have occupations in life, professional occupations, um, where and, prob- and probably political, cultural persuasions, they're progressives uh, mm-hmm. as well, that would compel them to be people who are more likely to get tested. I mean, maybe that's true. But Let's also- say a lot of work in healthcare. How about that? Mm -hmm. But like, I would be curious to know. So if this relates to the Provincetown outbreak, they're saying that three quarters of those people were vaccinated. But if I mean, like, that doesn't necessarily matter if it's if they were asymptomatic and tested positive and they didn't transmit it to anyone else. What I'm curious about is like who gave it to them, right? Was that person vaccinated? Because that's the interesting fact, not whether or not some vaccinated people tested positive. Like we knew that that could happen. All right, so yeah, uh, seltzer over there. Have one of those. So let me Help continue. Him. The agency has also has tracked data from the COVID nineteen Sports and Society Work Group, a coalition of professional sports leagues that is testing more than ten thousand people at least daily and sequencing all infections. So this must be all the sports leagues that we hear about where, where athletes have to go home because they're testing positive. Yeah, it's still unclear how common breakthrough infections are and how long the virus persists in the body in those cases. Breakthroughs are rare, and unvaccinated people account for the bulk of their virus transmission, Dr. Uh, Wolinski said. Regardless well, of- I mean, it's like kids. Like, can you find cases where kids give somebody COVID? Yeah. But is it is it what's driving infections in our society? No, it's absolutely not because they have a lower viral load. Their immune system knocks it out. They're not transmitting the way other people are in general, generally speaking. So- I mean, if being vaccinated hugely lowers your risk of transmission, why are they coming out here and giving the impression that it's the opposite? Right. Because it sounds to me like this is a whole lot of saying what we already know to be true, that vaccinated people can get the Delta variant and that maybe they do some transmission, but for the most part, not. Regardless, the data that the CDC is reviewing suggests that even fully immunized people can be unwilling vectors. (laughs) Uh, for the virus. I'll believe it when I see it. Right. We we believe at individual level they might, which is why we updated our recommendation, Dr. Walensky said in her email. The conclusion also suggests that vaccinated people who are exposed to the virus should get tested even if they feel fine. In Britain, vaccinated people who are contacts of a known case are required to isolate for 10 days. The new data do not mean that vaccines are ineffective. No. no. That's not what they said at all. No, definitely not. No. The vaccines they came out and said that you're more likely to transmit it if you're vaccinated. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> the vaccines still powerfully prevent severe illness and death, as they were meant to. And people with breakthrough infections very rarely end up in a hospital. All right, that's important to know. About 90% of people hospitalized with COVID-19 are unvaccinated, according to data from the CDC. But scientists warned even last year that vaccines might not completely prevent infection. Previous versions of the virus, yada, yada, yada. The variant is twice as contagious as the original virus. In one study suggested that the amount of virus in unvaccinated people infected with the Delta might be a thousand times higher than seen in people infected with the original version of the virus. CDC... Which is still fine if they're not transmitting it to other people. Like- right. The CDC data support that, find- that finding said one expert familiar with the results. I, so many people not going on record here. It's interesting. Anecdotes of cl- clusters of break- breakthrough infections have become increasingly frequent with groups of vaccinated people reporting sniffles, headache, sore throat, or loss of taste or smell, symptoms of an infection in the upper respiratory tract. But the overwhelming majority do not end up needing intensive medical care because the immune defenses produced by the vaccine destroy the virus before it can get to the lungs. Well, then that's all I need to know, right? 
You would think so, but they seem to have spent the last 48 hours putting out the opposite message as loudly and publicly as they can. So, I mean, that's why this is, they're going to end up backtracking on this. The data, I, I honestly, I don't think this data is going to be strong enough to support what they're saying people need to do here. And the, um, the way this change was rolled out, regardless of what the data shows tomorrow, when they finally let us see the data, like, I, it's, there, there's no excuse for that. This is like, like, honestly, I think out of all the stupid things Trump did and out of all his stupid messaging that he had through all of 2020, this is like the worst government messaging around COVID that I think we've seen to date. This is the absolute pinnacle of ridiculously bad messaging. But uh, I, I mean, like I say, I'll believe I'll believe it when I see it. I don't. I just I don't understand why they went about this this way. I don't understand why they rolled out the change first and held back the data that supposedly supports it for two days. And I guess we'll see tomorrow if if the way they're characterizing this is accurate. But I just it it doesn't seem to me that it's worth it. It's it, I they had better have some really really uh compel. I mean, because to me here's the thing, right? Like. The masks are only a tiny bit effective. So if you're going to go back to making everybody wear masks, then you should be doing that because you're sure that the lives that are going to be saved by the masks are going to be at least as many as the lives that are going to be lost because now you've convinced a bunch more people not to get the vaccine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? And I don't think that's going to turn out to be the case. I think that they just put a bunch more people's lives at risk by making it sound like the vaccine doesn't work. And going out and making people wear masks, which may or may not save a few lives possibly. <laughs> like I, it's, it's the most backwards risk calculus I think I've ever heard of. And I Abs hate them and I'm <laughs> infuriated about it. Yes. It's cool. almost like it's, it's almost like, you know, we want to drive people from going to, to, we want to drive people from Vermont to Rhode Island. And the first step we do in convincing them to move from Vermont to Rhode Island is blow up Rhode Island. <laughs> so okay, I don't think that that was well thought out. You know, it diminishes the uh, desire to go and visit the crater state. Uh, you good, Allie P? I'm good. Are you good? Yes. Thank you, everybody, for a great weekend. I'm sorry Alice um, was um, so salty to me today and so really abusive to me all week, as you've all <laughs> as you've all seen there. Although her risque photos have made their way around, and that is a uh, that is not true. That is a don't, fun that's thing. Very you look, rude. You I look, don't take risque. You look photos. beautiful. No, well, you look nice just in this right here, right now. Thank you. Hi, guys. Um, you can uh, check us out on Twitter. We're at Burn Barrel Pod. We're also at Facebook.com slash Burn Barrel Podcast and at Burn Barrel Podcast.com. You can shoot us an email, Burn Barrel Podcast at gmail.com. Or you can uh, check us out on YouTube. That's Tom Shuddock's Burn Barrel on YouTube. Leave us an, a review on Apple Podcasts if you get a chance. And uh, we'll talk to you all next week. C'est la vie.